R.E.M. Green, right now on States and Kingdoms. So the first album that we talked about was Murmur, yeah. their first album, first LP. I love Murmur. It, it really is one of the best debut albums. It's, uh, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. And this album comes out when, it, when they're in a very different place, really, just signed with a major label. There's no like, clear consensus about Green. There's, you know, there isn't really about any of their major, even the major label releases after, you know, uh, after Document. I think there was one review that mentioned that this is a very eclectic album. And I think that word gets thrown around way too often. But in this case, it actually does fit. I always thought so. I thought it was. I thought it, it, it's a, a really fun album. You know, there are the, you know, the big rock songs, that, as they say, and... You know, but then there are also the the kind of, you know, Appalachian inspired folk songs. Yeah, and, like meditative, and the, the, almost yeah. Uh, not repetitive, not in a in the in a bad way, but like cyclical. You know, and a, and a, a variation of subject matter too. I think it's a very interesting album, and yeah. it, it is eclectic. It does seem like it contains, like everything they could do. You know, uh, um, you know they could, they they'd already done these. Very introspective, you know, very folk influenced, mm -hmm. you know, songs in the past, and that's that's being very simplistic. But you know, here they they could also write this just straightforward like '60s rock and roll song, like "Stand." It's just yeah. what it is. It sounds like it almost sounds like La Bamba. You know, it sounds like just like this. Yeah. With not a great deal of depth to it, you know. But just a, a a good melody, and it is a good melody. I, I I like, and you know we've. That's one of the first songs from REM that I remember hearing. Mm -hmm. Definitely wasn't in the '80s. It was at least '90 or '91. Stand is one of our roller rink songs. Mm -hmm. When we were in the after school program, went to the roller skating rink every week. Yeah, we talked about. It. I think we talked about it in the yeah. last video. Very influential time. You know, REM was everywhere when when I was. Uh, I don't know, not like I saw them everywhere, like a, like a nightmare or anything. But I, yeah, they were almost. they were just a huge band, uh, you know, around ninety one, ninety two, and I didn't like yeah, it. Yeah, I wasn't a fan. I didn't like it, and I, uh, you know, the the um, losing my religion uh, video. I hated that video. Yeah. So I, I had a I had a, a prejudice against REM for a long time. Plus. They influenced everybody, yeah. and there were so many bands that sounded like REM, and I, I didn't, didn't like, like them either. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, it really... Not going to name names. It took a long time uh, to get rid of that, and it was Life's Rich Pageant that did it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, and all that being said, all the stuff that we didn't like when we first heard REM, yeah. um, I always did secretly like Stan and Orange Crush. Mm -hmm. Those two songs, um, you know, not enough to run out by the album, but I did enjoy them, and I and I like them more even now. Yeah. The end, but of course, as a kid, hearing those you know handful of songs a lot, I had no idea that they had already been around for so long. No. I had no idea at that time. You're talking about. I mean, I was a I was a baby nugget. I was just a baby nugget. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. I, I had no idea what what it, you know they brought their their influence and you know the depth of of their catalog yeah and with rem it's impossible not to talk about their influence obviously i mean it really does matter mm -hmm. you know for some bands you know we don't always talk we don't talk about you know who this band influenced as much yeah. maybe as we could um Sometimes they didn't influence anybody, uh, so then there's really nothing to talk about. <laughs> Me. No, but uh, in in REM's case, I mean, it's other than you know so, some obvious bands like you know the Beatles. It's hard to right. think of a band that was so influential. They really, without REM, like music in the mid to late '80s and '90s just doesn't happen. It's just flock of seagulls nonstop. I don't know why I picked on them. Would that be so bad? No. Yes. Sorry, right. Flock of Seagulls. <laughs> I didn't mean to hurt you. Such hate. 
you know, and, and you know what's interesting about REM's influence is, is, you know, I could say, arguably, you know, REM is the most influential band of the 80s, or most important band. I'm not saying that they're the best, necessarily, because those things aren't the right. same. Clearly state your terms. But... I don't want anyone to judge. When you look at the people that they influenced, on this album, mm -hmm. you hear, you know, Nirvana, of course... Dave Blur. Matthews. Oh yeah. Um, Flaming Lips. Yes. There's uh there yes there the the there is a very good likelihood that Rip Pop would not have happened. <laughs> that some some of the those people were listening to R.E.M. in the mm -hmm. late eighties. Um, obviously, I mean Tom York has a, is the only one that's admitted it. Right. Um. This you know this. There's there's more you know I, yeah. I can't think. Well, of... we we've. We've discussed between you and me. We've talked about, you know, um, Pearl Jam. Well, of course, Eddie Vedder. Right. We've talked about, uh, we even mentioned, you know, Scott Weiland. Certainly lyrically. Stone Pilots. Yep. There's so many more. There's that, just, just like. You just, just get the feeling, the it's like the lingua franca of, of like, you know, mu of rock music in the 80s. And, and it's so interesting. It's like, what was it about this band that, sort of provided all of these people with inspiration or, or mm -hmm. a, a model for how to, you know, write their songs, express themselves. Uh, it's, I'm not... No, it's fascinating. But one it thing... It really is. One thing they did do when they, you know, even on Murmur, you, you hear it, you hear it on uh, Chronic Town, sort of they're revitalizing, they're, they're uh, sort of synthesizing something, you know, something new, a kind of, you know, folk rock a kind of folk rock but it doesn't rely on like anything like any models from the 60s really yeah. I mean even the birds thing could be overstated right it's there a little bit but it doesn't have to be it's like they, it's almost like them. they gave those people a separate tradition to draw from you know it's there's something really interesting and in just how they approached music and their effect on like everybody mm -hmm. um it's it's fascinating because they, it, you know, if if you're listening to uh, you know. Almost any any band uh, from you know the eighties or nineties, it's like you, you were listening to REM, weren't you? Yeah, basically, without REM, there's no nineteen nineties. Green, like we said, is. Some people don't like it. They think it's you know it's too commercial. They you know. The, there really is no consensus, which is interesting, and that's a whole different conversation. I hate that that reaction. Sell, selling out kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, it doesn't. I, I hate that. I hate it with every band that gets. I can understand. I can understand. We know with REM, the people had such a like a personal connection to, to those early albums, and worrying about you know are they going to be you know, they're going to change. They're going to be hanging out with millionaires or yes. politicians. Yes. Maybe. Yes. Um, you know, things, you know, things that I understand that. I mean, I understand that, but the music never really, the music was always good. And, and this album is, I, I love, you know, I love the, the, you know, uh, pop song 89 get up. I, I think those are great songs yeah. that are just, you know, fun to listen to. Mm -hmm. That's to me, that's this, this album is fun. It's one of their fun albums. It's like really dynamic too. You know, there's a lot of like like play with the vocals like you know the lead and the backing vocals like call and response still, type of thing still and... developing mm -hmm. their style even yes it's not like you know they they you get the feeling that they just like phone this one in or anything not at all no not no. at all they're still they're still experimenting still trying new things it's it's really kind of just a refreshing album and they're you know um, world leader pretend uh, most people like that song I know but it is a great song and one of his best lyrics yeah really um, it's not simplistic no yeah, it's really it's very clever it. yeah and the wrong child is great that I the wrong child uh, is, is is just sticks in my mind always because his like wailing mm -hmm. on that is always moving always yeah. moving this is a really very uh, good album for people who may, you know, because uh, obviously, you know, for people that don't listen, didn't listen to R.E.M. in order, didn't, you know, see them then. Right. 
uh, whatever. If you're just, I think this is a good album for them to to get into. I yeah, I agree. To see, you know, because it's got a little bit of everything. It really, it truly yeah, does. Yeah, you know, like any of the sampler. directions that they could go in, it, it's basically all represented here. And I do think it also is a kind of a natural progression from document. I don't, you know, like I think after Life Switch Pageant, they kind of had a couple of ways they could go. They went the document way, you know, a little bit more rock main a little more mainstream yeah. you know and um this is just more of that i actually like this album more than document but life's just pageant you. is the one that really i mm. sort of allowed me to you know understand rem uh, you know no, just let go it. well let go of the, that 90s you know that stuff and sound. just let go of, you know and enjoy the music yeah their style didn't really change that much to my ears no, oh, it I, sounds like R.E.M. That's that's one of the interesting things that you know. I don't I don't hear a massive change. You, you know, you listen to, you listen to Murmur. Listen to um, you know what Out of Time or, mm-hmm. it's like yeah, it's R.E.M. You know, I mean, it really yeah. it, the differences are, are fairly subtle, and you know they there are always things that they do throughout throughout their career. So it's it, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of. I interesting. thought a lot of the songs on Murmur are super catchy. Murmur. Did I say mummer? I think I said murmur. I think you said mummer. I said murmur. I said mummer. Also, I just wanted to say, Michael Stipe's voice, I appreciate more and more. Mm. The more REM I listen to. You know, because I think you just, like, take for granted a lot of their songs and REM as a, as a giant band. You know, the, like this thing mm-hmm. that's just around. Mm-hmm. And, um, but when you, when, at least I'll speak for myself, when I really listen, you know... His voice is just very, very pleasing and very. Mm. Pleasing. Affecting. Emotive. It's a great voice. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he does a lot with it. He really does. I mean, it's really, really good. That guy is going to go far. He's a really good singer. Oh my goodness. Okay. Thank you so much for watching our brief discussion of R.E.M.'s album Green. Let us know what you think of this album in the comments. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to States and Kingdoms, and we'll see you next time.